dear students let us study today funds flow statement we will have a brief recap of funds flow and then we will go into more detailed analysis of financial statements last few sessions we have been studying cash flow and funds flow statement do you remember now what is meant by cash flow statement this is the statement which makes a summary of cash inflows and outflows which have been categorized specifically as operating flows investing flows and financing flows same way we have also seen what is a fund flow statement fund flow statement is in a way developed prior to cash flow statements here we give a list of from where the funds have come and from where the funds have gone but we do not specifically categorize the items into investing or financing they are simply listed as inflows on one side and outflows on other side in fund flow statement there is one important item funds from operations which shows the profit which is realized and which gives inflow to the business and usually there is a item on application or use side that is increase in the working capital because as the funds are generated from business some fund gets locked in working capital that is what is shown in fund flow statement let us have a look at ppt for few moments and then we will solve the problem which we are solving in the last session so we have seen what is a fund flow statement let us have a look at it once again this is what is a calculation of funds from operation here we calculate the net profit add non cash expenses depreciation adjust for non operating item and the figure which we get is funds from operations to this we adjust for we also calculate the changes in working capital and this is the format of the final statement where we show inflows on one side you can see what are the inflows one of the most important inflows is as i have just now told you is funds from operations then there are inflows by selling fixed assets there are inflows by selling investments or by issue of share shares or debentures and so on same way outflows are listed here major outflow is increase in the working capital sometimes if there is a loss that will be an outflow and then there will be purchases of assets there could be redemption of shares dividend paid all these are outflows we had seen the concepts of fund flow statement if you remember last time we were solving a problem on calculation of fund flow for reliance industries have a look at it i had told you that try to solve it yourself so this is where we had started we were given the balance sheet for 2 years and some extract of pnl account also for 2 years from this we were to make fund flow statement so how do you start how will you make fund flow statement from this much of info yeah you are right first what we have to do is find the difference between the figures because that is something which tells you the flow so any increase or decrease in the assets and liabilities indirectly shows or hints that there is some flow so we calculate the difference then we identify those differences as inflows or outflows and from that we try to make the final statement before making the final statement of fund flow we have to calculate funds from operations and we also have to calculate the changes in the working capital let us see what we had done in the last session so we were here if you remember first we calculated the difference in this column so all the figures were simply subtracted i mean 10 figures were subtracted 9 and 10 so you get the difference then we have identified the difference as inflow or outflow so let us have a brief recap at it so equity share capital you can see there is a increase in the equity capital that represents inflow why does it represent inflow anyone can tell so what happens is the capital has increased so probably it has come by issue of shares for cash 
So, it is an inflow. Of course, there is a possibility that it might have also been because of bonus, bonus shares. In that case, it is not an inflow, but right now no such information is provided to us. So, we will take it as an inflow. Next is reserves. Reserves, you can see there is a decrease in reserve. This is FFO. So, it has come, we have taken it as fund from operations because it represents the changes. Then we have got gone into secured loan. There is an increase in the secured loan, it is an inflow, decrease, it is an outflow. On asset side or on application side, if you see there is a gross block, there is an increase in the gross block that represents the purchase of fixed assets. So, it is an outflow. Accumulated depreciation, this is charged or adjusted from profit and loss account. So, it represents uh, it is an item of fund flow, FFO sorry fund from operations. So, we have marked it as FFO and so on. The items which were not to be considered have been marked as XX. For example, net block. Then some items like inventories, debtors, cash, they are marked as W cap because they represent the changes in working capital. So, if you remember for all the items, we have marked them as inflows, outflows, working capital, FFO and so on. In case of profit and loss account items, the difference has no relevance. We have to only look at the current year figures. In our case, March 10 is the latest figures. So, we will look at those figures and identify whether they will have any impact on the fund flow statement. So, you can see first item is sale turnover. It is not to be considered for fund flow statement. So, we marked it as XX, then excise duty XX, net sales excess. Other income is marked as I because it represents an inflow and it will also have to be adjusted in FFO. Same way all expenses are marked XX except interest which is an outflow and it will also need to be adjusted in FFO. So, this is where we, we, we were. Do you remember? Okay. Now, from this let us try to go to the next level and try to prepare fund flow statement. So, I will try to make a copy of the sheet and now let us work on it. So, what will be the first step? We need to make two working notes one for calculation of FFO, other for calculation of working capital. So, let us make those notes first. Once they are ready, we will go for final statement or the fund flow statement. So, let us make a working note first, which is on calculation of working capital. I am requesting that you also try to solve with me, so that you really understand exactly what I am doing. So, first we will make it for FFO, full form is funds from operations, so here we are trying to start with profit and make relevant adjustments to know what was the money coming in from operations. Here you can see the change in the reserve, we take it as a proxy for profit. So, the amount which is given here is in negative. So, same amount we will take as changes in reserves. Now, look for FFO items as we have marked. So, first one, this one we have already taken care now. The next is accumulated depreciation. Will it be added or deducted? To reserves, answer is it will be added. Why it is added? Anyone is able to remember? We have discussed it at the time of making cash flow and also at the time of making fund flow. What happens is depreciation is charged as an expense, but there is no outflow for it. 
so when we are calculating the fund from operations or cash from operations it needs to be added so 1 3 3 1 9 that is 13 3 1 9 represents the amount of depreciation provided so we have accounted for this also now the next one you look for all the ffo items next item you can see here other income now other income this is something which is added to for calculation of profit but it comes from it is a separately to be shown as a inflow item so we should not include it in ffo that is why we will reduce it the amount for the current year is 3088 so i'll try to adjust that amount so other income now in this case it should be deducted and not added so i'll specifically say less other income so that it's more clear to you again go back go down you will realize that interest one more item now interest is a outflow specifically to be shown but it also appears in pnl that is why we will reduce it from pnl sorry we will add it so we will say add interest this represents interest paid amount is 2000 so if i try to calculate now fund from operations you can see here i will add the depreciation minus other income plus interest paid so 4259 represents the funds from operations as we have calculated now next calculation we have to do is for changes in working capital now naturally you will look for items which are marked as w cap so take a look at the items which have been marked as working capital uh, wait a moment first let us mark this ffo so amongst the working capital items you will see starting from inventory we have inventory debtors and cash these three items there is a change in the working capital so let us take these three items this represents the change then again there is a item loans and advances which is one of the current assets please do not uh, confuse it with the loan received that is a source these loans and advances are working capital item they represents short term advances given so it's a working capital item now we have two items on liabilities also current liabilities and provisions so total changes in the current assets so you will realize that there is no increase there is a decrease of current asset by 6766 6, 6, and there is a increase in the liability by 5908 
change in the working capital I am trying to find. So, it will be increase in the working capital minus increase in the sorry increase in the current asset minus increase in the current liability. So, I get a figure of minus 12,000 because it is minus 6 minus 5. So, this is the overall you can see is a decrease in working capital. For more clarity, I am specifically writing that since the figure is in negative, it represents the ne uh, decrease in the working capital. So, now we can mark all these W cap items because we have recorded them. Fine. Take a look, there is no other item left now. Now, we have to go to the main statement wherein we will record all the inflows and outflows as given and we will also take the items which are taken from working note that is funds from operations and decrease in the working capital. So, now let us try to make the final statement that is the statement of fund flow. Keep in mind that these statements are for a particular year. In this case, it is for uh, March 0 10. So, it is for year ended 31032010. Now, we will list out all the inflows first. So, take a look at the statement. There are number of items where inflows are given. So, we will take those items first. So, first inflow is share capital. So, equity share capital has increased by 1696. Now, this increase 1697, this is an inflow because probably there is an issue of share. It is also possible that there is some bonus share, but since information is not available to us right now, we will just go for recording it as an inflow. Now, the next item, take a look at again the main sheet. You will realize that the secured loans have gone up. Uh, so, that is on inflow to us. So, we will record secured loans. So, it is 972. Next is, so we have considered two inflows so far. This outflow will take later. Next inflow you can see is investment. In case of investment, what has happened is investments have actually gone down. Take a look at figure from 20,000 they have reduced to 19,000. So, there is a sale of investment. So, I would like to specifically state that there is a sale of investment in equity shares also you may specify that it is equity shares issued and secured loans taken because new loans were taken in the year. Then there is a sale of investment which is to the tune of 1013. Next inflow you can see. So, all the inflows in the main statement are over. I think I hope you are getting it clearly. There is one item other income we have marked it as I FFO that is to show that inflow. So, there is an inflow to the tune of 3088 that is because of other income. Can you imagine what does this other income likely to include? Well, it is likely to include dividend received income or interest received from investments. So, it is not a inflow from operations, it is a separate item that is why 
it is shown separately under the inflows as other income 3088. Now, apart from this fund from operations 4259, this is also one of the important inflows. So, 4259 is an inflow which we call as FFO or fund from operations. Then there is a decrease in working capital. This also represents an inflow. Most of the cases we observe that as business increases, the working capital requirement tends to increase. But in case of this company, in case of Reliance, you can see that for March 010, there was a decrease in working capital. So, it releases the funds for day to day operations. That is why we have marked it as inflow. So, it is 1, 2, 6, 8, 5. We have calculated it. We got the figure as minus 12,000. So, we concluded that it is a decrease and we have shown it as an inflow. So, total inflows we have calculated. Now, let us try to calculate the total outflows. Now, for outflows, you again go back to the main statement, take a look at various items as are given. So, first one you can see unsecured loan. So, there is a decrease of unsecured loan from 63 to 50. So, company must have paid for repayment of unsecured loan. So, I will take it as an outflow. So, you can say unsecured loan repaid for more clarity. Next item of outflow is gross block. As we already discussed, there is an increase in the gross block which shows purchase of fixed assets for the company. So, I will mark it as purchase of fixed assets. Now, next if you see now there is no item left directly from a PNL account. The last item which you can see is interest. This represents the interest paid. So, it is an outflow the amount we will take the current year figure which is 2000. So, we have marked three items. Now, take total and verify is it matching. So, you can see it is matching there is a minor difference that is because of error in rounding off. So, we will ignore it, but total of inflows and outflows comes to 23715. Is it clear to everyone? Please have a look at balance sheet again. So, this is we were we were given only the data for two years, we have first calculated differences, then we have identified the items as inflows, outflows and then we have made two working notes. One was on fund from operations, second was change in working capital and then we have made the final statement or statement of fund flow. I hope it is clear to everyone. Keep in mind that whenever you are doing profit and loss items, actually there are two adjustments required. And in case of balance sheet item, it has only one effect. Okay. So, we will stop here for this particular topic. Now, we are moving to the next topic that is on analysis of financial statement. So, what we have done so far is we have covered a topic on balance sheet so that you understand the basic figures. Then we have gone into profit and loss account. Next level, we have also seen the recording part as to how the profit and loss account or balance sheet is prepared. So, before that, you need to know how the entries are recorded in the transactions that we have seen. Next, we have also seen how do you make cash flow and fund flow statement. Now, we will try to go into interpretation of financial statements. Before going into that, first let us see how to interpret a cash flow statement or fund flow statement. Now, you have this fund flow statement in front of you which we have just solved. 
So, what do you see from it? How do you interpret it? So, as you can clearly see during the year company has the biggest amount the available with the company was from decrease of working capital. So, company has taken a decision to reduce its day to day assets especially its cash balance has been significantly reduced. You can look at the figures in the working capital you can see the cash balance. So, reliance was flush with money lot of cash was available. So, they have reduced their cash balance substantially and that is why there is a decrease in working capital of 12,000. There was also some money received from operations and money received from investment to the tune of 4,000 and 3,000 that gives us explanation as to from where the funds came. Now, look at the outflows. The biggest outflow was repayment of unsecured loan which is to the tune of 12,000. So, perhaps company is trying to reduce its interest burden by repaying the unsecured loan. Secondly, company is also improving its financial position because its debt equity ratio will improve. The loans totally taken by the company have gone down. We are going to look at the ratios today, but I am just explaining as to what will be the impact of this repayment of 12,000 on the financial position of the company. You will also see that 9,000 crores was used for purchase of fixed assets, which is a required investment for expansion and also for maintaining the current uh, machinery conditions, maintaining not in a sense of repair, but lot of old machines would have been worn out. So, company has to replace them and also add few more items in plant and machinery or other current assets. So, that is 9000 and interest paid is of course, 2000. So, this is how you can uh, understand how the fund flow statement is made. I think uh, let us make one more fund flow statement which will make the things more clear to you. So, please look at the balance sheet of General Motors. As you know one of the biggest corporates in the world, one of the largest company in US. So, I have tried to show you the balance sheet for two quarters March 31st and June 30th of 2011. Then we have also calculated the difference between the two. Using this data now we have to calculate or prepare fund flow statement. Okay, now, how to proceed? Just give me a hint as to what is a way now for us to go ahead with this. Yeah, anyone is able to recollect how should we how shall we go ahead? You are right. These are the figures in dollars. First, what we have to do is we have to identify the items into inflows, outflows, working capital, FFO and so on. Once they are identified, we will try to prepare next statements. So, you can also see the format as per the US gap, which is uh, much different than the format of as per the Indian gap. So, here under current assets, the first item shown is cash and cash equivalents. You can see there is a difference of 504. We have been asked to make a fund flow statement. So, how to go ahead? What will be the first step to make a fund flow statement? Uh, look at cash and cash equivalent, there is a decrease minus 504. We are comparing June quarter with the March quarter. So, this is a working capital item. So, I will mark it as W cap. Next is short term investment. Short term investment, you can see there is a major increase from 8000 it has become 12000. So, there is an increase of 36000. Again it is an item of working capital. Net receivables, there is a decrease in net receivables. Again it is an item of working capital. Net receivables or debtors represents the money which is recoverable from the customers. Next item given is inventories. You can see there is a small change in inventory, small increase in the inventory, but it is a working capital item. 
other current assets again a working capital item so total current assets is given we will not consider this item next hai long term investment now long term investment you can see there is a increase in the long term investment under what head we will put it it is not a working capital item it is not going to be an inflow it represents the outflow because company must have invested some money in the securities or in some other markets that is why long term investment has increased next is property plant and investment again you can see there is a increase so we will mark it as outflow next item is goodwill now this is a very important item you can see there is a small increase in the goodwill again it is an outflow as per us gap goodwill is shown as a separate item when we saw the balance sheet of reliance it was not shown as a separate item in this case it is a separate item and there is a outflow so we will mark it uh, there is a increase so we have marked it as an outflow next is intangible assets you will see there is a decrease in the intangible assets so how should i put it inflow outflow where will it come this is slightly a tricky item you may feel that decrease means it's a inflow we might have sold the assets it could have been true if it would have been tangible assets in this case what has happened is intangible assets represents items like software patents which are essentially written off so decrease in the intangible assets is due to writing off of those assets not because of sale or any other way so writing off is going to affect the fund from operations so we have to mark it as ffo next you can see other assets other assets again there is a small increase increase is because of purchase so we will mark it as outflow then total assets we will ignore now let us go to liability side we have finished asset side maybe you can have a look at asset side once again now let us go to liability side liability again it starts with current liabilities the first item is accounts payable so how will you mark it as for us it's simple it's a working capital item so we'll mark it as working capital next is short or current long term liabilities again it is a working capital item because either they are short term liabilities or even if they are long term liabilities only the current portion of long term liabilities so it's a working capital item there are no other current liabilities total we will just mark it as xx next is long term debt you can see there is a marginal increase in the long term debt so it should be marked as what inflow or outflow there is a increase in the loan so company has taken new loans so it's a inflow for the company other liabilities again they are long term in nature because we are under other liabilities not under the current liabilities so there is a decrease in the liability which represents an outflow why it is an outflow company must have paid cash to decrease its liabilities so it's an outflow so total we have to ignore so now we have tried to mark all items from balance sheet now let us go down and uh, balance sheet nesses assets and liabilities now we are looking at stockholders equity again note that in case of us gap balance sheets it is given separately in indian balance sheet we only show assets and liabilities here they are showing assets liabilities and equity separately first item preferred stock or preference shares there is no change common stock or equity shares again there is no change retained earnings 
you can see there is a decrease a significant increase in the retained earnings it represents inflow or outflow actually none of them it represents the profit earned and accumulated so we are going to mark it as ffo next you can see is capital surplus now you will note that the capital surplus has increased now we are not given exactly the reason why capital surplus has increased it could be because of sale of assets and the profit earned or it could be because of shares issued at premium in this case you can see that there is no issue of shares so capital surplus is probably the reason it has happened because of sale of assets you have to also look at asset side whether there was any sale we don't see any major sale of asset in fact the properties have increased so there is a purchase of asset so we assume that it is because of transfer of money from revenue or day to day surpluses to capital surpluses so we will mark it as ffo of course this is because of our assumption next is other stockholder equity again there is a small increase it represents inflows because money should have come from something so we'll mark it as inflow then total we can just mark it as xx net intang uh, tangible assets also are not important for making fund flow statement so we are marking it as xs now let us go to revenue statement or pnl items the first item is total revenue how will we mark it total revenue is it an inflow or outflow it is neither inflow nor outflow because we are going to separately consider the profits so we will not consider revenues next is cost of revenue again not to be considered gross profit again we have to ignore gross profit r and d costs are anyway not given selling and general expenses you will find that there is a decrease but decrease is not important in fact we are not going to consider this item at all they have also mentioned some non recurring expenses we will not consider total operating expenses we need not consider interest expense now this we need to consider because interest is regarded as separately as an outflow and it also has an impact on profits so we will mark it as o and ffo okay all revenue statement pnl items are going to have two effects in the fund flow statement so we have marked as o and also as ffo so take a look now we have marked all the items i hope it's clear to you why we have marked those items like that now using this data we have to make fund flow statement before that we need to make two working notes which are those two working notes first working note is for preparation of changes in working capital calculation of changes in working capital next is related to calculation of ffo now let us look at changes statement of changes in working capital so all the items which are marked as w cap they will go into this statement we will start first with current assets so this is the information as is given so you can see that cash has we'll just shift this side cash has actually gone down short term loans have increased etc so you see that there is a net position of we'll just take the total so this is a total increase in the current assets now take a look at current liabilities so in case of current liabilities also there is a increase 
So, you can see here once again that all the current both the current liabilities have actually gone up. So, there is an increase of current assets to the tune of 3035 thousands and there is an increase in the current liabilities as well. So, we will calculate the increase in working capital So, this is an increase in C A minus increase in C L. So, net increase is this amount, right. Now, we will try to calculate the second working node that is on calculation of FFO or funds from operations. Now, again go back to the balance sheet, look at the items which were marked as FFO. Before that, let us specifically mark the current assets item as done, current assets and current liabilities. Now, working capital you will see that, uh, sorry, FFO you will see that the first item is on intangible assets. So, intangible assets which have gone down must have been because of write off. If you go down, you will see one item on retained earnings that represents the profits earned. So, let us take that first. So, increase in return earnings is one item which we have taken. Then there is an increase in the capital surpluses. Let us take that as well. So, these two items of FFO are over, then we have one more item on intangible assets which have been written off. Now, should this item be added or deducted? intangible assets have been written off. I will specifically write that. Yeah, try to guess add or less. You are right, this should be added because it is like depreciation which is a non-cash expense. It is for writing off of intangible assets. So, they will be added. Next FFO item you can see, you can have a look at the whole balance sheet now. Any FFO item has remaining, you can see in the end there is an item interest expense. You need not see old figures now, there is nothing like a difference. We will just look at the current item of uh, current interest in this case, will it be added or deducted? interest expense. You are right, it is also added. So, interest as and when paid has to must have been reduced from profits. Now, we are adding it back because we are going to separately show interest expense. So, we will mark interest also as recorded. So, for funds from operations, there is an increase in Retain earnings, increase in uh, capital surplus, intangible assets written off and interest expense, all of them will be added. So, this is the total FFO, which is an inflow. 
Now based on this information, let us try to make the main statement or the statement of fund flow. Keep in mind this was a statement for a quarter, these are not fund flow and cash flow are not for not a statement like balance sheet as on a date, they are statements for a particular quarter. So, we will record them for quarter ended 362012. Now, we need to record the inflows and outflows. So, one of the important inflows is funds from operations. So, let us record it first. Now, look at the items which are given in the balance sheet and which are still unrecorded. So, we see all these outflow, outflow, outflow. There is one item long term debt, there is an inflow. So, what has happened is new long term debt is taken that is why company has received money I have marked it that way. You can look at the item for more clarity long term debt has increased from 9329 to 9571. So, there is an inflow same way there is an inflow in other share stockholder equity. So, might be there is some small issue of share or there might have been conversion of ESOPs. So, they also represent inflows. Now, you will see all inflows are over. Now, try to look at the outflows. Mainly outflows are from assets because of purchase of new assets. So, let us all record them together. I hope you are with me. We have calculated, uh, we have already marked these items as outflow. Now, we are transferring it to the main statement. So, I will mark it here as well. Now, go down, you will see one more outflow from other liabilities because other liabilities have been paid off, they have been reduced. So, they, that caused some outflow. but this is not a negative item. So, this outflow also we have considered other liabilities. Now, if you see all the balance sheet items are accounted, but we should also account for interest expense because it, it is also interest paid only the current year figure is relevant that is 155. So, we have recorded almost all the items. Now, let us take the total. So, you will see that total inflows are more than outflows. So, you must have excluded some of the items. Take a look at balance sheet once again. What have we excluded? Just try to guess. Actually, we have not considered working capital. We have included all other items. We have not considered working capital. So, where will it go? We have calculated the statement of working capital. There is an increase in working capital that also we are aware. So, where should it go? 
increase when happens it represents an outflow so it should be considered as a outflow so i'll record it as a outflow so now you can see it is exactly matching keep in mind that increase in the working capital is one of the important outflows and ffo or fund from operation is one of the important inflows so here the statement is ready now try to look at the statement carefully i hope you have understood the process of making so now you will realize that out of 3722 main amount 3403 is fund from operations and as far as the outflows are considered the biggest is new purchase of plant and also to an extent increase in the working capital they have also paid off some old liabilities this is how fund flow statement gives you an idea as to inflows and outflows so we stop here and in the next session we will look at more details of the analysis of statements in this session we have covered mainly preparation of fund flow statement wherein what we do is we find the difference mark the items as inflow outflow mark the items as working capital mark the items as ffo then we make two working notes for working capital and for funds from operations and then all the inflows outflows and these two items need to be taken in the main statement ensure that the total of inflows match with total of outflow then you have considered all the effects correctly thank you so much we'll meet in the next session